in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there are still goddamn cash shops and games? So, Warhammer Dark Tide released a short while ago in November of 2022. And being both a fan of the Warhammer 40k IP, and having previously played Fat Shark's other Warhammer games, the Vermintide series, I was pretty excited to jump into Darktide. It's Vermintide, but with a 40k twist. There have been a lot of games made in the 40k universe, and it can be quite a difficult IP to do justice. And after about 30 hours or so of playing Darktide, I can safely say that Warhammer Darktide is, in fact, a video game. Um, it's kind of mid. Now, normally in my quick shake reviews, I avoid all spoilers for video game stories, as I feel like no review really should be a replacement for actually experiencing a game itself. Uh, and by spoiling elements, it can ultimately detract from your experience of the game. But. I'm going to kind of break tradition here, because Dark Tide's story doesn't really exist. Like, okay, there is a backdrop of a story going on. There is a hive city that's had a particularly nasty case of a chaos infiltration. An infiltration of the Nurgle Evil. Your character was imprisoned, but they are released on account of you helping out an inquisitorial agent in the midst of your first day in prison. I, I think. A cool function of designing your character is actually being able to pick what crime your character was imprisoned for, which I do really think is a cool little element to character creation, but ultimately this doesn't come into effect anywhere, disappointingly enough. Like it's never brought up by any character ever. So yeah. The story of the game essentially is you join an inquisitorial warband in which every cutscene you're constantly told you're very expendable and to gain my trust by not being expendable. <laughs> like we're talking five or six cutscenes of like the same guy going, Oi, you better learn your place. You're expendable, yeah? And I done trust you. You want to be not expendable? Uh. Uh, y y yes yes sir. Right, then do yourself a favor, yeah? Prove yourself and get less expendable. Uh, uh, okay, but, uh, how- Do I make myself clear? No! There is a plot point that starts to emerge towards the later half of the game, that there's a traitor aboard the Morningstar, which is promising, only for it to be revealed in the end to be- Okay, are you ready for this? Because this is the major spoiler. Look at all the spoiler warnings on the screen, okay? You, you, can, you can still turn away now, alright? Okay, are you ready? Okay, so the traitor aboard the Morning Star is some guy you never met. <gasps> look, look, that's him! That's the traitor! Generic guy number 347! Uh, hello, hi. <laughs> and he's dead. What a twist. Honestly, I had my money on the butler from Clue. Though admittedly, the story being shallow isn't really something you'll find yourself being all too worried about, as the gameplay loop itself is actually a lot of fun. If you've ever played Vermintide, or even Left 4 Dead 2, it's the same sort of deal here. Four players push through hordes of enemies to complete objectives. Keep an eye out for specialist enemies and the occasional boss. Don't step on the demon host's toes or she will absolutely give you the stink finger. Which, you know, given all the Nurgle stuff going on, I suppose it's really off-brand and rinse and repeat. Each mission will give you experience, resources, and even an occasional gift from the Emperor. Though like, I, I don't know why, but I just kind of always receive axes. Like I have like like 30 plus axes in my inventory. The, the Emperor keeps giving me, in his endless wealth of knowledge, axes while leveling up my zealot. Ah, another sword. Thank you, Peter. Go ahead, try it out! Which brings me on to the four classes to choose in Dark Tide. We have the veteran, Mr. Shoots a lot. We have the zealot, Mrs. Screams a lot. We have the Ogren, Mr. Sponges a lot. 
And finally, we have the Psyker. Mr. Oh God, my head is about to explode. Can you just please pick me up a lot? Nah, but seriously, he looks like a ton of fun to play. Just, man, does that boy need to stop drinking the spicy brain juice? Holy shit. The game's max level cap is 30, and every five levels results in a new perk, which usually centers around your class's main ability. You also unlock access to other weapons, curios, and cosmetics as you go. The level progression doesn't feel unrewarding, as you will find as you level up, the character's power does make your tours around the Hive City a lot more enjoyable. For the first character. But when you reach your second character, you'll really be jonesing to just get to those perks. In Fatjock's other game, Vermintide, each class in the game gets even further customization in the choice of three subclasses. Something which I think would add a huge amount of variety to the current Darktide lineup. Now don't get me wrong, the classes in their current state do feel unique out of the gate. But when you, again, start to level up another character after hitting 30, things just sort of start to feel samey. And I kind of feel that's the issue, that's the trends. Once you hit 30, you're in this weird spot of, do I keep playing the same character I've been boosting up, after already essentially hitting the maximum skill ceiling with them, or do I just do it all again on a new character? I think this wouldn't be so bad with more levels and subclasses, but as it is, you'll probably find yourself a little bit drained at this point. Now I know this is something that Fat Shark is actually actively working on currently, and the observant of you might also make the astute observation of, but Milkshake, even Lifford did too only initially had five campaigns. However, what I would point out, since you know, I mean, you made that comparison, not me, is that while Left 4 Dead 2 only had five campaigns, these were split up into multiple checkpoint-based missions, leading to the game having closer to 25 unique levels. And this is, of course, before Valve went and added all the original campaigns from Left 4 Dead 1 into the mix as well. For free. Look, I don't want to sound like I'm being overly negative here, or I'm a negative Nancy, because I like Dark Tide, I really do. It's just that there's only really seven missions, all of which look pretty visually similar. And throughout the course of leveling your first character to 30, you are going to kind of see every level multiple, multiple times, which can be a bit of a bummer because these levels are gorgeous. They do capture the 40K gothic setting so well. And I really hope later down the line, we have a lot more choices and missions and tile sets to explore. I'd also like to take a moment to highlight some of my favorite parts of Warhammer Dark Tide. Because there is absolutely some praise that needs to be sung here too. Firstly, its soundtrack is perfect. A cocktail mix of religious choir meets electronic synthwave. Composed by Jester Kide, I never found myself dreading an incoming horde or defending an objective because the minute one of these tracks kicked in, I was immediately sucked into that fantastic grimdark atmosphere. This game's soundtrack is definitely up there in my favorite soundtracks of 2022. Honestly, probably second only to Sonic Frontiers. And you all know I am biased as f Another thing that Dark Tide does really well are the enemy variety. You've got your dregs and scabs, cultists of Nurgle who are ready to gum up your operations with their sheer volume of lads but who also have their own dedicated specialists within their ranks. Then we have the Groaners, the infected zombies that have risen up through Papa Nurgle's big stink, and ready to pretty much just do what the dregs and scabs do, but you know, they, they, just, they just don't shoot you as well. Then you've got your pox walkers, your bruisers, your shooters, your stalkers. Oh, oh, and then there are the specialists. Remember I mentioned them just before? Here we have the bombers, the jumpers, the tox flamers, the mutants. You don't think chargers, but not. No, actually, just think chargers. Chargers from the. <laughs> the pox hounds, the pox bursts, the snipers. Seriously, 
fuck the snipers, the trappers, the bulwarks, the crushers, the ragers, the reapers. Damn, all these names kind of sound like they're metal bands or something. <laughs> the maulers, and then, and then, yes, we are still going. We have the sub-bosses, or the monstrosities, the beasts of Nurgle, a big hungry boy that vomits everywhere and can swallow players whole. And don't make that weird. Then there's the Plague Ogrins, who's just kind of like the Player Ogrin class, only souped up to 10. And now they're even smellier and spongier. Oh, oh, and then there's the Captain, who you really only see at the end of the assassination missions, but they can be pretty tough for the uninitiated, boasting an energy shield and some pretty adequate firepower. And finally, we have the Demon Hosts, the Walmart version of Left 4 Dead 2's Witch. Only this exhausting bitch isn't just content to kill the player who accidentally bumped into her. She'll often end up just also picking one other unfortunate player to take with her back to Brazil. You're going to Brazil! <laughs> so seriously, just don't bump into her, okay? And if you do, empty everything that you can into her as quickly as you can. And so we reach my final thoughts on Darktide. The game has the skeleton of, well, a seriously fantastic 40k squad-based shooter. Its atmosphere is pitch perfect, its music is fantastic, its voice acting is great, and I got, it got a laugh out of me a lot more than I initially expected. Take my advice. Give up hope. Hold on to vengeance. That's all. Enough with the Canadian poetry already! Its enemy variety is good, though I would love to have seen some Plague Marines in like the later, higher difficulties of the game. Yes, I'm sure they'd absolutely massacre the player, but they're really iconic, you know, when we're talking about Nurgle in general, and it feels kind of weird to not include them. Also, Nurglings! I would have loved to see Nurglings in the game, especially that one little sassy Nurgling with a helmet. Like, look at that boy, isn't he just the most precious thing you've ever seen? The game's only real shortcomings are the lack of levels, the lack of some kind of subclass or expansion to the characters, and the story being, well, Okay, the lack of a story. There is so much that can be added to Dark Tide that has me really excited, honestly. But also leaves me a little bit paranoid that, you know, Fat Shark will ultimately just throw the bigger ideas into the too hard basket. But even in the state that it is in, if you have a group of friends that really enjoy the 40k universe and love these kind of cooperative horde shooters, there is a lot of fun to be had with Warhammer Dark Tide. And Fat Shark are updating the game fairly frequently right now, which is great! They haven't made any sort of roadmap for updates, but they have made a few promises to the community on spicing up the missions and encounters. So that's at least promising. I think if you're a huge 40k fan, particularly a fan of the Imperial Guards and the Inquisition, then this game will be a lot of fun for you and is worth the price of admission. In my playthrough, I honestly had the urge to make up and paint an inquisitorial warband for the tabletop game. But, you know, with 40k prices, that, that's a financial venture for another time. Uh. If you're not so much of a 40k fan, it's still a great time, just maybe hold out for a Steam sale or for more content to drop. Or, alternatively, you could get it for free! No, 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 no. That's right, because I have once again deviously concealed a copy of the game within this quick take. At this point, I'm sure you all know the drill, but to reiterate, you just need to find the three parts of the CD key, combine them, enter the key onto Steam, and wham! You're an acolyte of this Inquisitional Warband. And I think that's as good a place as any to finish off this video, honestly. Our first video of 2023. I hope you all had a great Christmas and a relaxing New Year's, and now that I'm fully recovered from Nurgle's Rod or COVID, I am happy to get back into making more videos and content for you all to enjoy. And if you liked the video, please leave a comment, like the video, subscribe if you feel so inclined, all the typical YouTube buzzwords. And until the next time, my fellow conscripts of the Imperium, take care of yourselves.